Hello and welcome to Elven Home and to this edition which uh, welcomes some new arrivals to the layout uh, takes a look at the first steps of building the pub uh, following the creation of the Skittle Alley uh, and also takes a look at the start of the work to do the scenic work around the depot uh, and includes of course two more channels, Engage channels, YouTube channels that I enjoy watching. So let's go on to the little bit of work that I'm going to show in this video in the creation of the pub for High Elven. I've been having fun today uh, building the uh, pub and it suddenly occurred to me that I was having so much fun that I was getting further ahead than I had recorded. So I've just stopped having fun to have different kind of fun talking to you, he said, thinking very quickly. What I thought I'd do is just show you where I've got to in terms of building the pub. Uh, not going to go in too much detail, but just so you can see. Um, in terms of the main carcass, you'll see that I've, well, this, is, I'm, this is what I love about scratch building. This is just five pieces of card, that's all it is. And already you can start to see the pub beginning to form, the building beginning to form. A um, lot more work to be done. But the, the, the walls are up, the back wall is on. Uh, I've cut out the windows here, though I've cut that one one millimeter too long, so I'll need to do something uh, to fill that in. Uh, on the back, you can already see the decor. Um, I've just put in the back wall, so I'm using this brown really to, for, for a reason that I'll explain, and this uh, maroon color. So that's that part of the pub done. The bar has been built. Um, you are not going to see this close up, so it doesn't have to be wonderful. And I was able to build this from scraps that I had knocking around. Uh, this is uh, 3.2 millimeter square uh, stri strips, I ring two pieces of that with, uh, with a piece of 3.2 millimeter by one and a half millimeter uh, to give me my bar top. Um, and that if I show you here, sits about there on the plan inside. That I'm going to paint in the mahogany colour. Um, move that to the back. Uh, this colour, which I've used, which I painted the um, Skittle Alley, because I assumed it would be similar sorts of wood for the other parts of the pub. The What this is, is the back wall as you look through the windows. And you'll see why I'm using this color scheme. This is an image that I took off Google. My God, that, I'm so surprised myself. I haven't done that before. That's a really quite close match. Um, this is an image that I took off Google. I just Googled pub interiors and searched through until I found one that I liked the look of. Uh, and obviously in the, the basic color is this brown of the bar and then this red for the wall. So that set the internal colour scheme for the pub, hence the back wall that you've already seen. This will sit in the pub here. If I, I wonder if I can do this. Um, and then hold it and you will get an image. There we go. And then the pub, which is going to be mahogany, will sit in front of it. If I just put my finger here, see if we can make this work. <laughs> you should have tried this before I did the camera. There we go. So if I bring that up, you'll see the bar will sit in front and that will be painted mahogany. Uh, there's two other bits of card that will go in so that when we're finished, that will sit about there somewhere. Move this on the front. And that provides then the internal wall and the bar runs in L shape through. And then I will complete the wall coverings is made. This is simply in Excel. Uh, I've mentioned before, Excel is your friend. Uh, and that is nothing more than taking um, a row and making it the height that I needed. That was a little bit trial and error because um, Excel measures the height of the rows in pixel, pixels. Uh, and I needed something that was one centimetre uh, because that's the, this, this, this is two centimetres, sorry, this is 18 millimetres high and it's very roughly 
halfway one to the other. So that's nine millimeters there, nine millimeters there. And eventually I got down to 28 pixels high, gave me exactly what I wanted in terms of this. Picking the color is done using the color wheel. Um, there is a video which I'll put a link to in here, which I did a while ago, showing how I use Excel to make brick papers. And in that I show the color wheel that allows you to choose colors. And so I, it was a bit of trial and error getting the color to match the, the tones and colors that, that are in the image. Uh, and as you saw there, it, uh, it's come up with a really quite a good match. Um, you may recall in the last video that I was saying how I couldn't find windows to go into the front. So I was struggling to find windows. And I did some more work on that and still couldn't find what I wanted. So the only solution was to make my own. Uh, and here they are. There's another one somewhere. There it is. Just off camera. These are the two front windows. Um, I'll put up while I'm talking here just to show you a jig that I made to be able to create these. This is made from two millimeters, I think it's two millimeter strip styrene by 0.75 and then some very thin, I think this is half millimeter or maybe one millimeter square. Oh, it's 0.75 square because it's 0.75 deep. Um, and so I, I used a piece of card to give me the, the right size for the aperture, uh, the external aperture here, so that I could fit the four separate pieces in but hold them tight for when they were gluing. And then fitting these bars was just a case of cutting the pieces to the right size and, and putting them in. Uh, but that's given me my two front windows, which I will, I may, I, I'm, I'll see what they look like once the windows are on, whether I put um, glazing in, which is frosted at the bottom. A lot of pubs had half the window frosted so that people couldn't see in. Uh, the only problem is, of course, if I do that, you won't see in much to all the work that I'm doing inside. So I may, I may not do that. Um, otherwise, I think that's everything I've got to so far. So I need to paint up the bar, put all the internal walls in. I've marked up internally, there'll be one or two places where I will want to put supports for the ceiling to sit on. Uh, and I also now need to work out uh, here how I'm going to wire the thing up. So that's something that needs a bit of thought before I get too further forward because obviously the way that I put everything in um, will determine the extent to which I'm able then to wire things up. I think I'm going to wire things up and have the wires sitting in the upstairs part poking down, um, I think, but we'll see, we'll see. I need to think that through, particularly should anything go wrong and I need to replace uh, one, I need to think of a way of how, how I do that. So. That's enough for now of where we're going to with the pub uh, and you'll see the next phase of it in the next video because you spend a lot of time looking at this desk and I want this video to have a few more things in it. So let's go on to the next section uh, which will be two to watch. Welcome to two to watch where I showcase two other Engage YouTube channels that I like to follow. The first channel this week is the Engage Modeler. This is a new channel which started in August this year. On the About page, Matt welcomes you to the channel and says that this is a fresh starting model railway, Malcolm's Way, a southern themed railway in Engage. Welcome aboard, it's sure to be a journey. The layout is named after his late uncle, who inspired his love of trains, and Matt is building this railway to create the layout his uncle never quite managed to build. So far, Matt has put up four videos, which have taken us through the intended track plan and his base boards, and in the most recent video, which only came out this week, he showed his, him starting the task of soldering on droppers to the track. He is close to being able to show us locomotives running, and he held out the tantalizing prospect for the next video of seeing soon a Duchess class locomotive running which he has recently sound chipped. As with all new channels I'm enjoying watching the development of the railway and look forward very much to seeing trains running on Malcolm's Way. I hope you'll go across and take a look at his channel and subscribe so that you can follow that journey too. 
The second channel in this episode is Rule 1 Model Railways. On his About page, Nick welcomes you to Rule 1 Model Railways, where all modelling is good modelling. Uh, he features all sorts of railway modelling videos, interviews with layout owners and other interesting archived content. The main layout featured on this channel is Western Parkway. This is a four track main line and branch line exhibition layout and the layout is computer automated so only one operator is required. As Nick describes this channel is a really interesting mix. I was originally drawn to it to watch him build his exhibition layout Western Parkway which he is completely controlled via iTrain. Some of his most recent videos have shown the trains being run entirely controlled automatically. This provides for very realistic running. Nick wanted to build an exhibition layout where he would have time to talk to people and not have to concentrate on running locos. I think the degree of reality in the running would be challenging to achieve by manual control. I've been really impressed with the skills that he's freely happy to impart to others as he's shown the construction of the sections of the baseboard. The layout is quite large. It has to be able to be disassembled and packed up for transporting to and from exhibitions. He has also taken time to talk through the technicalities of creating a completely automatic controlled layout. I hope at some stage that we will all get a chance to see the layout in action when we can once again start going to model railway exhibitions. In addition to the layout build, Nick's channel provides quite a deal of variety. Nick has taken time to create playlists to help guide you to other topics of interest. You will see he's undertaken reviews of locos and rolling stock. There are how-to playlists on things such as making platforms and ballasting. There's also an interesting section from the archives where he has curated railway modelling clips from past years. It is interesting to look back over things that have appeared in the past mainly on television, in particular Blue Peter, a children's television programme in the UK that I well remember watching as a child. So that completes the two to watch channels for this episode. As ever I will put links to both channels in the description below for you to go and have a look at after you've watched the video. Thank you also to everyone who made contact after the last video to suggest new channels for me to go and see. I have a number more now to add to the list. Please do feel free to suggest any new channels that you may come across that you think I might enjoy. There really are many more engaged channels than I first realised when I started the Two to Watch series. I'm really enjoying going through them and passing on to you those which I enjoy watching. And with that, this brings Two to Watch for an end for this episode. Well, as you may have guessed, there's some new arrivals uh, on the layout, uh, which you'll have just seen from the running shots. I've wanted for some time something properly to run behind uh, Royal Scott, 
Uh, I've got Royal Scot in a form in which she's been preserved, or was briefly preserved, which was in LMS Crimson Lake. I don't think she ever wore that in service. But obviously the only thing to put behind a locomotive in Crimson Lake uh, is a rake of Stanier uh, LMS coaches also in Crimson Lake. Uh, and so I finally succumbed this week. Actually, I succumbed in two ways, and I'll tell you about the second one. Uh, and ordered from Rails uh, this beautiful rake of coaches. There's two first-class brakes uh, at either end of the train, and also six uh, third-class vestibule. Um, there are other variants, but I didn't really want those. This I think this makes up a nice train, uh, and looks really good as it as it goes around the layout as I hope you'll have seen from the running shots that you've seen. My uh, desire to buy these was also fueled uh, by something that I've been I've been looking at and thinking no I really don't need this. Many of you uh, engage modelers who are into steam will know that Graham Farish are about to bring out the 8F and I've had on pre-order for a long while the LNER version, the 06, uh, to which I will put a sound chip because the locomotives come fitted with a speaker ready to accept an X18 sound chip decoder. And I was convincing myself that that's enough, 18F is enough, and the LNER one will be brilliant. But if you're in the Backman Collectors Club, you will know that they are going to bring out an 8F in Crimson Lake. And the, the crowning glory was they're going to bring out one that is sound fitted. Um, and so I've succumbed for that as well. So in addition to being able to be pulled behind Royal Scott, this wonderful collection of coaches will be able to go behind the 8F once it arrives. Now I'm told that's due to arrive at some point in November. And it is not impossible that it will be here before the next video, but certainly should be here before Christmas. So uh, I look forward to being able to show you the 8F with sound and possibly, if I can get the other sound chip in time, with the L and the R06 pulling a, a rake of uh, uh, goods wagons um, going in the other direction, also fitted with sound. So something to look forward to. Now, if you give me a bit of a moment to move things away, I'll move on to the work that I've started doing in doing the scenics around the depot uh, and the things that I'd hoped would have arrived by now, but are on their way. So I'll just clear away a bit and then I'll come back to you. Well, emboldened um, by the um, significant encouragement in response to my last video, I've started work on the scenic work here. I'd hoped to have got a bit further, uh, but various things have thwarted me, not least it taking a while for some uh, materials to arrive that I want to use uh, in and around this area. Some time ago, I bought some legacy ballast, which is the DCC Concepts legacy ballast, if I show you the box. This is the dark grey blend, which I intended to use around the steam shed and around this area generally, not, not exclusively, but generally. Uh, because anyone who's ever been near a steam shed will know that you don't get very clean ballast around there because between oil, coal dust and ash, uh, it's a pretty mucky place uh, and certainly there will be places where you would expect it to be pretty mucky. Um, moreover, the uh, ballasting around those areas, there's not a defined shoulder very often, in fact rarely at all in and around the depot itself. So I'm going to want to be able to do two different types of thing here, which is to have more of a, on the running lines, these three lines here, the branch line and the up and down. Um, those are going to be ballasted in the more conventional way for the period, uh, very similar to what has been done over by the station. But when I get to this area, it's going to be a mix. The line at the very back has been done, you can see. It's been done very roughly, deliberately, in case you're wondering, my ballasting skills are not very neat, uh, because I think it would be very much a mixture uh, at that right at the back there uh, between proper ballasting because it's taking the coal wagons up the um, incline and the more um, flat and even look that you tend to get in a depot area. Uh, I've got another bottle of this legacy ballast coming which I think is the brownish blend he said. I'm desperately trying to remember. I'm pretty sure it's the brownish blend. 
And I think what I'm going to use is those two legacy ballasts to do this front area, not least to give a bit of contrast to the ballasting at the back to try and suggest that these are two separate areas, if you see what I mean. Um, so that's on its way to me from DCC Concepts. Um, I've put some out here to give you a, an idea. There's a really nice, if I be careful, I didn't drop this all over the place. If I bring it to the camera a bit more to try and get, see if you can see, if I bring it in and focus it. There's a nice mix in there of a dark brown, but also some black. So it's, I think that will look quite good once it's down. I need to do a test with the Ballast Magic, which is what I tend to use. Ballast Magic has been used at the back, if I go back up again. Uh, the track, all, the, all my ballasting has been done using Ballast Magic, uh, and I find it really very good. So I'm uh, quite happy using that stuff, but I do need to test it now with this new ballast to get the right ratio of Ballast Magic to that ballast, because I think that is finer and I suspect I'll need less ballast magic than I do with the N-gauge uh, ballast that I've been using up to now. Also on its way to me uh, is some 2mm grey board because I want to try around and do the hard standing around here. Uh, I've had a look at using clay and all, all sorts of other um, interesting things and I don't fancy that for a moment but I do think that overall a two millimeter piece of gray board as an under uh, cover and then I can use some one millimeter uh, plastic hard board to provide what would be the hard standing on top and we can decorate and paint that which will cover essentially uh, in here so this is where the first part of the engine shed is it will then carry on up to about here and come across down to the back and into there and that is the area in which the new engine shed whether that is wholly scratch built or whether I might um, uh, kit bash uh, some of the newer Metcalf kits uh, in red brick which they've only very recently brought out I think uh, and I'm in two minds as between the two the obviously building up the whole one would be very good but there are certain components that it's really difficult to get in engage which are built in double o things like roof trusses and the rest and yes i could build my own um, but the roof trusses that come with the new engine shed kits are really very good which is why i use the engine shed uh, kit for high elven and it gives me everything i want and i can hang the lights from them and all of those sorts of things so I'm swithering between the two, but I don't need to deal, deal, worry about that too much until such time as I've got the hard standing in place onto which the uh, new engine sheds will fit. So that pretty much is where we are with this. Um, I hope, I'm, well, I don't know how far I'll have got by the next video. It much depends when things arrive, but I'm quite busy on other things over the next uh, fortnight. So we'll see how much of this has been done by the time you see it in a couple of weeks time. Um, you may uh, have not have seen, but all the engines are currently, it's all got a bit dark here, let me just move some lights for you. The, all the engines are now beautifully arrayed, if I go, go along here, uh, with two A2s sitting up there and then all, all the locomotives sitting and waiting, having been displaced uh, from their engine shed. So I'm, I'm quite keen to be able to get them back into where they need to be. And also, of course, to have somewhere to store the ATF once it arrives. So that's it for this episode of uh, Elven Home. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. That's all very helpful. And if you haven't subscribed, well, please do subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading. Uh, really great to have you along if you've not already subscribed. Please do let me have your comments. I love getting the comments. I enjoy responding to them. Many of them, most of them, all make me think and things have changed, as I say each time on this layout, because people have suggested things to me. But until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.